welcome back to uh, uh, blockchain technology and applications, uh, uh, another uh, lecture. So, last time we were talking about Ethereum uh, blockchain uh, and what are some of the differences between Ethereum and Bitcoin and one of the uh, uh, difference we saw is the, uh, the difference between how the state is maintained in the blockchains. Uh, in case of Ethereum, it, it is based on accounts and in case of blockchain, it is based on uh, UTXOs or uh, uh, you know unspent transactions. Now, the question, remember that in case of the block, uh, the how the blocks are uh, kept in the Bitcoin, we talked about Merkle tree, right. So, in Merkle tree, we have uh, a very uh, specific data structure, which basically is a hash tree. Now, Merkle tree is uh, quite a bit of work to find a particular transactions for a particular account, for example, in case of uh, Bitcoin, uh, in case of Ethereum. So, they use something called a Patricia Merkle tree. And so, Patricia tree is a data structure, which is actually based on the idea of a prefix tree or radix tree or tri. So, the idea there is that I want to save space, but I want to record a number of different strings, let us say. Not everything is not necessarily strings, it may be other objects like uh, account uh, uh, addresses and, and information like that. So, the question is how do you store them? So, in a try what happens is that if you have number of different let us say strings and uh, you do not want to. So, if you want to store the strings in a Merkle tree for example, then if you have uh, let us say 100 strings, then you will have 100 leaps, each of them will be storing the string and then two of them will be hashed and then another two will be hashed. So, you will have a height of uh, log of 100, which would be about uh, height of uh, let us say log of uh, 100 will be about close to maybe uh, uh, log uh, to the base 2 is 7. So, you might have a tree of height 7 and then all the different uh, things. Also, finding something there unless the, the leaves are sorted will be quite a bit of work. You do not know when you start from the root which direction to start. So, the idea of try is that you keep the prefixes of the different uh, prefixes of the different uh, common prefixes on the path. So, for example, suppose I want to store this strings 2, t, ted, 10 and n, right. So, in this case, what you would do is that we see that there are four of the strings has starts with the same prefix. So, t, so I will create a root and then I will have a child which is marked, whose path is marked with t and then I will have a note for t and then I see that after t, there are two with e and one with o and actually 3 with E. So, therefore, I will create uh, one branch with E and then, then it will be T E and then I will be easily create this T, Ted and 10 and then you will have this one which is uh, 2 that is separate. Similarly, here you will have uh, let us say uh, there was another word A. So, A is b alone here and then you will have this one in was different. So, in then n and i n this will stand out separately. So, we have basically used a prefix uh, encoding in creating the data structure and therefore, if I want to search TED, I know that I have to go in this direction, go in this direction and then go in this direction. So, the searching will be log n and uh, it will be even uh, sometimes uh, if you have uh, much more commonality in the prefixes it will be even easier. So, this uh, data structure try is used for implementing for example, routing table and uh, routers and so on. So, this is not something new that is uh, being invented here, but they decided that this is how they are going to store the account informations. And then Merkle tree you already know. So, there is nothing new to discuss in Merkle tree. So, if you want to keep uh, different data then make them the, the leaves and then you start making hashes and get the hash. The root hash will give you uh, integrity of the entire thing. So, they combined the 
idea of Merkel Patricia tree as the data structure uh, through which the blocks are stored. So, since we are not going to uh, really work on the blocks per se, I just want to give you an idea that this is another different optimizational aspect of Ethereum compared to the Bitcoin blockchain. So, now what I want to do is I want to tell you how to go about playing with uh, Ethereum blockchain and creating your own network. So, that you are not uh, initially having to work with uh, Robstein or B or certainly not on the main net. You create a simulated uh, Ethereum blockchain on your machine using something called Ganache and then uh, you use Trueflow which will be used for creating smart contracts and applications and the ability to deploy contracts. So, what these things will give you is the ability to very quickly get started with creating smart contracts. For example, you want to create some smart contract like already skeleton smart contract available let us say and then you want to fill that in a little bit to create some functions in the smart contracts and play with it. So, what I would do is that I, I will assume you have an Ubuntu otherwise what you can do is that you can download a virtual box from the uh, from Oracle. It is a free software virtual box you can uh, google it and then you can download it. It is basically a virtual machine ability to host a virtual machine through virtual box. Then Ubuntu distribution sites and you can download Ubuntu uh, let us say 19 or 18 point 04 LTS whatever is the version you want to get and you get a ISO image. Uh, it is going to be pretty heavy couple of gigabytes, but uh, nowadays that is not a big deal. So, you download that and then you create a guest machine in the virtual box with Ubuntu and then you can use that as your experimentation uh, machine within your let us say windows machine. Or what you can do is that you can find the instructions for creating Node.js and, and uh, installing Node.js and Truffle and Ganache Kli on your windows machine. I have not done that, but I am pretty sure you can find how to do that on the internet. So, let, but I am going to assume that you have Ubuntu. So, you have to update your Ubuntu first and then install Node.js and Node.js is a, actually a development environment for JavaScript applications and then you do a install the node uh, package manager which will allow you to do various uh, things like uh, install Truffle, install Ganache Kli and so on. You want to check the version uh, of NPM, it is uh, 5.0 plus is good. Then you use the package manager NPM to install three things, Truffle, uh, two things Truffle and Ganache Kli. And then you uh, Ganache Kli will also create an account uh, Ganache Kli. So, you actually uh, do this. Now, when you start Ganache Kli, right. So, you will see that it basically is starting to emulate a Ethereum blockchain, which has already pre configured 10 accounts 0 to 9, and their addresses are given here. You may actually record this, copy these addresses to a file and the corresponding pri private keys. So, these are the private keys. And then you have the uh, gas price here, this is uh, in terms of V, and then uh, there is a gas limit. Uh, but this gas and, and gas price and all that stuff is going to be fake because th this is not against the main net. So, you do not really have to pay any money. And then it will start listening for uh, nodes to do things at this port 8545. So, this port, so when you make a, when you deploy a transaction, it has to refer to this host and this port. So, that you can, uh, you know, this it goes to this uh, Ethereum emulation and then you will see the effects of deploying a contract or testing a contract and so on. So, then uh, 
in order to uh, then you open a different window because that window will now be busy listening to for uh, for you know notes to deploy contract or do transactions there so you make another window and then you create a, a, a demo directory you make a, a directory name and uh, go to that directory and then say truffle in it right so what truffle in it will do is that it will create multiple different directories and these directories are called contract migrations test and so on and these directories will have uh, some skeleton code uh, for the contract called hello world it doesn't know what you want to do with hello world so that's what you have to fill in but at least you will put it will put out the skeleton so as you can see here this is what we are doing and then uh, truffle can also be uh, used to compile contracts it can also use to migrate contracts which basically leads to deployment and then you can do the testing of the contract and once you have run the truffle in it you will get this uh, directories under hello world contracts where the smart contract codes will be there migration is the migration code for deployment because when you create a smart contract you also have to create javascript or whatever to actually uh, deploy the contract or call functions on the contract and so on there is a test directory and there will be configuration javascript files and uh, now you have to start working with this so if you look at this thing then you will see that uh, you have uh, hello world and the hello world uh, is uh, has contracts in which it will have uh, one smart contract for migration called migrations.sol and then you have uh, a javascript in the migrations directory which is for the initial migration and then you have this configuration other stuff so contracts is where you store the solidity code of the smart contracts now we'll create a hello world.sol file and put in the contracts and fill it up migration is also another smart contract that is uh, going to be used to deploy this contract and test uh, is a test code and uh, uh, it can support both javascript and solidity and truffle js is a configuration document and truffle js actually is already filled with everything commented so you have to uncomment the configuration of the network and in your case the network is listening on port uh, on local host that is 127.0.0.1 and then it is actually listening to port 458545 uh, so you have to make sure that you uncomment that network configuration in which the port is 8545 in this file this file you can uh, is only for windows users or old ubuntu users so you can ignore it so now you do this create contract hello world and then it will create a skeleton for the hello world dot sol which will have the skeleton code where you have to fill things in so this will look something like this so pragma solidity this says what is the version of solidity solidity is a evolving language in last four or five years so right now i think it is uh, uh, 0 0.7 so currently so this this is from last year so most probably you will see something like 0 0.7 or something here and then in the contract hello world you will have to, there will be a constructor automatically you you don't need to do anything in there for this particular example a constructor is what actually initializes the the contract and it only gets called when you first time deploy the contract but if the constructor is skeletal which basically means that it is not doing anything but in this case uh, we want another function which basically uh, doesn't take any input but it returns a string and this string is actually is of type memory so it's not in the storage it just in the memory which means that this will not be st stored on the blockchain and then it will return hello world and then you can call truffle compile and this will compile the hello world.sol into bytecode now it also creates uh, a json file which is uh, in the build so you will see a build directory that has come up which was not there when you just created the read the truffle in it 
So, uh, you will see that JSON file in there, there are some of the configuration information and you do not have to worry about it for this simple contract. And then in the uh, migration directory, you create a another JS file, uh, JavaScript file. Remember, there was already a one underscore initial migration file. So, now you will be creating a two underscore initial file. And in that case, in there you are going to say, so it is a JavaScript. So, there you are going to say that I have this variable hello world and the artifacts required for this is the hello world dot SOL file. And then it will say module dot exports equals function deployer. So, it requires a deployer and deployer deploys this smart contract. So, the name of the smart contract is hello world. So, it is going to deploy this. So, when you uh, uh, run this JavaScript, it will uh, deploy based on the configuration information that is already in the truffle dot js and, and so on. So, as I said that uh, in the truffle dot js, you have to make this uh, uh, uncomment. So, mostly they, they will come commented like this. So, you have to basically uncomment the relevant part. So, that you know that your host on which uh, the network host is local host and then the port at which it is listening is this and then you call truffle migrate. And remember there was a window in which the ganache uh, was running and it was stuck at the point where you left it. So, now as soon as you migrate, you will see that uh, it will tell you what is being deployed and, and all that stuff. So, you will see all these things in the migrate, uh, this kind of information, the contract address and so on will come in that screen where you have the ganache uh, running. This is actually the what you will see in the ganache screen, where you will see all this uh, different uh, things being invoked and these are the transactions, block number and so on and so forth. So, now you can try this, you can also uh, go to the ethereum.org website and you can actually uh, directly play on the uh, on, on through the web interface. So, they have a hello, if you go a little bit down, you will see a hello world, there will be a coin uh, smart contract uh, D app. So, various D apps are there, you can also play with that instead of having to do all this yourself. But I think it is more fun to do it yourself than going there and because the amount of uh, visibility of what you are doing, it will be slightly less uh, when you are doing it through the web interface. But you can do that also and you can see number of different contracts to learn how the contracts look like and uh, how they work and so on. So, in this uh, set of lectures, uh, you learned the design philosophy of Ethereum blockchain some basic differences between Bitcoin blockchain and Ethereum, the concept of smart contracts, the concept of Ethereum network and simulation of such network for testing. And uh, finally, a clue about how to simulate a local private network and try out a simple smart contract on your own. So, in this uh, course, so we are, we, are, we are about four weeks away from the end and we have to cover a lot of other things. So, next thing that I want to cover is uh, uh, some of the issues uh, that this Bitcoin and Ethereum, this uh, permissionless and cryptocurrency blockchains have that we have ourselves at our laboratory have, ha have discovered and I want to actually make you aware of those. Uh, because uh, as you know probably that uh, RBI had put a, mm, a restriction uh, on uh, cryptocurrency uh, buying and selling in India and then recently in last week, uh, the Supreme Court has asked RBI to uh, enable uh, cryptocurrency uh, uh, exchanges and cryptocurrency selling and buying and so on. And I personally has been very, uh, uh, you know, critical of uh, that. Uh, step because in a country like India where people can be easily fooled and they are not so aware, uh, there are a lot of things about uh, Bitcoin and blockchain that uh, people do not know and they might actually uh, lose money because it is very speculative and uh, therefore, uh, uh, I want to give you some little more uh, idea from our own research as to why I think that uh, cryptocurrency is not something that should be uh, uh, bought and sold in India. 
So, what we are going to uh, do is uh, I want to start talking about this and, and eventually we will uh, talk uh, in details. So, first thing that I want to say is that uh, we have studied the uh, entire Ethereum blockchain until last year's April. We basically downloaded all transactions, all smart contracts that have been there since 2015 to uh, 2019 April and we analyzed uh, how many contracts are involved in most of the transaction, how many contracts have most of the ether, how many contracts have most of the uh, um, uh, you know uh, activities and we find that there is a huge amount of inequality in the Ethereum smart contract and, and we are doing this because Bitcoin uh, similarly Bitcoin blockchain information has been similarly uh, analyzed and the people found very similar patterns and we wanted to see if Ethereum has the same. And remember that the idea that uh, the blockchain was, uh, was put forth uh, in, in the first uh, white paper by uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is that he wants to create a more just uh, uh, currency system and transactional uh, freedom, anonymity and all the government, inter lack of government interference and so on. But we find that the uh, real social inequality that we are seeing in real economy is being reflected here almost entirely and, and probably even more. So, what I want to show you very quickly and go over this uh, after in the next uh, session, but uh, I want to show you some of the results. So, what we have found is, uh, so until last year we collected all the blocks, so there were 7 million blocks. 7.1 million blocks at that time. There were almost 400 million transactions, about 760 million addresses, 44 million unique addresses among them. These are addresses that are referred in transactions and then smart contracts, there are we found 1.9 million smart contracts and out of which we found source code for about uh, 53 percent because uh, there is uh, uh, you know uh, there are some authors of the smart contracts also uh, put their uh, uh, the source code, whereas the other ones uh, they do not uh, put their source code, so we did this. So, we fi finally we collected 1.9 million smart contract byte codes, out of which half of which we can find, uh, we could find the uh, source code. But for what I am going to tell you now does not require source code. So, what I am going to show you is that, so it is observed that out of 1.9 million smart contracts, 94.6 that is 95 percent are duplicates. So, about 0.1 million that is about 100,000 or so uh, uh, smart contracts are actually original smart contracts. Most duplicated contract is of course, the user wallet contract which has about 650,000 instances. Only two out of top 10 uh, contracts which uh, duplicated like when I say top 10, the, uh, I mean the ones which have been duplicated the most. So, user wallet is uh, the most uh, duplicated and then uh, the fourth duplicated is forwarded. This two we have, uh, we got the source code. Now, it observed that top 100 contracts that is only 0.1 percent contracts out of the 100,000 original contracts, they actually do get duplicated about 1.72 million. So, so that means that 90 percent duplication are only in uh, about 100 contracts. So, diversity of contracts is very, very low. And then we have the wanted to see balances, right. So, we found that top 100 contracts contain 99 percent, almost 99 percent of the Ethereum. So, this is what we are uh, worried about in real society today in the economy that uh, like 0.1 percent of people actually uh, control let us say 70 percent of our uh, country's assets and, um, and this is true in the US and other countries as well. So, so this is an inequality that is uh, you know uh, worrying economists. 
and we would have thought that this, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, these things will liberate us from such inequality of the society because, uh, you know, there is integrity and all that stuff. But actually, that is not happening. So, only 100 contracts basically own 99 percent of the Ether. So, this is very, very worrying thing. And uh, we saw that smart contracts uh, on, the, on our data set were involved in 175 million transactions of uh, which is 46 percent of all transactions. And we found that the 2500 contracts are responsible for 90 percent of the transactions. So, which means that if it is not 100, but it is still only 2500 contracts which are doing most of the transactions. So, which means most of the accounts are excluded. So, I will go through this in even more detail in the next session, but what I want to caution you about is that this idea that blockchain and, and, and uh, this anonymous, uh, pseudo anonymous blockchains has, ha, will free up uh, so free society and all that stuff is not happening. And this is not only in Ethereum block, other people have did similar, done a similar analysis and they have seen similar trends in Bitcoin blockchain. So, we will we'll discuss this in more details before we go into permission blockchain uh, uh, for the next uh, several weeks. So, uh, but I, uh, I think that this is something you should keep in mind when, when people advocate cryptocurrency and uh, uh, you know cryptocurrency based uh, society and all that, uh, all that uh, buzzwords. Okay? So, uh, we will see you next time.